Yes, I picked another Capcom game. I, I don't know why. I'm on a Capcom kick. Sweet dreams. I didn't plan that pun, but it happened. Anyway, this is Capcom Presents Double May Cry 3. Welcome back to Keeping Busy. I am the Z, I am Zach, and I am joined by B, who is Brandon. That's me. I've played this game. I've played... Let's see, I've beaten one, I've beaten two, and I've beaten three, and I've beaten five, and I tried to beat four, and it kicked my butt, and I stopped playing it. I've beaten three, four, five, and DMC, DMC. You've heard of it, haven't you? Oh, uh, yeah, I've beaten DMC, DMC as well, yes. When I was young, my father would tell me stories about it. The reason I didn't beat DMC4 is also due to its design, because I, I think it would be unfair to say it's any harder than DMC3. Both games are quite challenging, and I imagine someone that's beaten both, Zach, would you say that their difficulties between 3 and 4 are kind of equal? I would say 4 is a bit on the easier side, but I would say, spoiler alert for Devil May Cry 4, I would say the Dante fight is very difficult, but I think it's also the most difficult fight in the game. Like, once you get past that, you kind of have a more comfortable time. Because I didn't even really get that far when I went back to play it. Like, my thing is with these games is that the reason- Devil May Cry 3, and I play the special edition, is, for me personally, one of the hardest gaming experiences I've had in general playing games. And the reason why I toughed it out through DMC3 was because the game has an amazing structure. It's because the game rewards you for play, usually with a long cutscene and story along with a new weapon or some other new mechanic. Or Every single time, there's a, there's a, there are a collection of levels, there's a boss, but it's always a particular challenge where there's a specific amount of things you have to do, then you get a cutscene, then there's, there's a bunch of challenge, then you get another cutscene, and the cutscenes are always like these, extremely well-directed, well-voice-acted, many times the lore in them is interesting, but many times it's just the action scenes in them are fantastic. And that drove me through the entirety of DMC3. Devil May Cry 4 does not do this structure. Devil May Cry 4 has a cutscene sometimes, but many times you'll just go from one level to another level to another level, and when I'm not getting that serotonin of, ooh, I get a new fancy cutscene if I beat this boss, it kind of threw me off of wanting to finish it, because the frustration made me eventually just stop. DMC4 is not the most liked Devil May Cry game. I think I remember it being a divisive game when it first came out. Not a ton of people were into it. I like DMC4. I think it's underrated, but it's also not great. But Nero's RM is so much fun. Nero's fun to play. Dante's, uh, yeah, Nero's fun to play, and Dante's also fun to play when you eventually get to him. But yeah, it's one of those games where the structure is you play Nero. And then you play Dante, but Dante just goes through the same Nero levels and fights the same bosses. And I don't think the cutscenes in DMC4 are nearly as entertaining. Like, I don't even think they're half as entertaining as the DMC3 cutscenes. I DMC3, I would say, is still my favorite. I like DMC5, but I don't know. For some reason, I just didn't like that game as much as I wish I did. Yes. I mean... I, I have beaten 5. I, I, I enjoyed the story and characters in 5 quite a bit as well. Um, I really like the dynamics. I like Nico. I like that, that they brought back Lady and some of the other characters. And the way that the continuity of the series plays off of the events that happen that game as the characters pass things on to a new generation. I unfortunately, because of just how much DMC4 broke me down, when I went to play 5, I played it on easy. And I kind of regret that because the easy mode in DMC5 felt like overkill where it was just a little too easy and I could have probably stepped it up but I ended up just playing it on the easiest difficulty and just playing it that way just to experience the story and characters and even but yeah I still enjoy five quite a bit but I would say yeah in terms of story and and just raw production value it's hard to beat three 
3 is so stylish. And on top of the style, like I said, the story itself is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. It's it, it's called DMC 3, but it's really DMC 1. It's a prequel to 1 that really goes into the origins of the character and his relationship with his brother, and it's it's all cool. Yeah, this is probably one of the greatest opening cutscenes for a game. Not just the Dante and Virgil fight, but this whole thing. This cutscene made me go, yeah, I'm going to love this game. <laughs> And that was before I even hit a button. But my first Devil May Cry game was DMC DMC. And a lot of people at that point hated that game. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story and characters. And I did enjoy the gameplay. And it made me go, well, why why do people love DMC D, uh, DMC 3 and hate DMC DMC so much? So I got, I got a sealed copy of the special edition of Devil May Cry 3 on Amazon for surprisingly really cheap. I was only 12 bucks for a game that was still wrapped in plastic. Like, it was basically brand new. Wow. And I saw this cutscene that I went, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could go back to DMC DMC nowadays. If you're going to play DMC DMC nowadays, Zach, your best option would be the remastered version they put out on uh, PS5 and such. Well, and PS4, too, because that version actually changes a lot of the issues the original game had. Like, you know how you could only fight certain enemies with certain weapons you have to switch to? They turned that off in the remaster, um, and they made a lot of other changes just to balance the whole game and make it a lot better as an action game because, yeah, like you, DMC DMC was one of my first experiences with the series. And I like DMC DMC quite a bit, but I'm also, I should state, I'm a fan of Ninja Theory as a developer in general. I really like their games. I love Enslaved, um, and I really like Hellblade. And that's kind of my thing. I like I like their particular personality and style. Do I think the personality of the old games is better? Well, yeah, that's not really a debate. Obviously, the, the cutscene quality is and just the the overall personality is far more likable than the extremely juvenile Dante which not to say he doesn't have his juvenile moments in the old games but compared to the fuck 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 cutscene in DMC DMC <laughs> but but just despite that the game DMC DMC deal still has a lot of things that make Ninja Theory cool like the environments sometimes in that game are just awesome with how they play around with like dreamscapes obviously to me the highlight level of that entire game is where you're going inside of that news broadcast and literally hopping across like the the lower third text for the reporters and stuff like that to, to fight the evil reporter boss that was all great it, like visually i wish the game did more stuff like that like that showed a, a great way to reimagine the series the problem is that they just went too hard in one direction that most returning fans were just like, why did you do this? Not to mention some of the things that developers said before that game came out weren't great. Oh, well, yeah. I feel like that's a... I mean, it's not just DMC. I, I mean, I think that was also a problem with D Dead Rising 4, like another Capcom franchise where they tried to reimagine the character and everybody just went, what the heck is this? And they're like, no, no, you're going to like it. Or it was it wasn't in DMC, DMC's case, the director, you know, was just like saying that the fans were just being overdramatic or whatever. Yeah, uh, something like that. And he also called Dante a gay cowboy or something along those lines. Oh, come on. Yeah, I can see that kind of stuff stirring up people online. I would say the best thing about DMC DMC is that you don't do that to pizza. The best <laughs> thing about DMC DMC is the level design. The way the levels shift and I really like the text. It, it is very stylish. And I do think the gameplay is good for a... For if it's your first one. I know a lot of DMC fans would tell you who don't play that one first. And I get it. But I do think in terms of like difficulty, I do think it's a decent starting point but maybe you should also just play one first or even five. 
Uh, I'd say for people that want to just dive into this but are worried about the difficulty, probably, yeah, just play five. I have a bit of a hot take in the sense that gameplay-wise, I probably like one the best. And I do, and the, when they got more into the super ultra difficult combo heavy games of the later ones, where especially in three, where there's so much more mechanics and everything, I honestly got way more into. Um, I, I, I to, to me three's difficulty was just too much, and it was only really the the the, the uh, structure of it that made me get through it. One was just like yeah, it was just like a mix of puzzles, and yes, the combat could be tricky at times. Um, but I just overall enjoyed the flavor of the first game a lot more, and despite the unfortunate nature of some of the goofy voice acting in the cutscenes. I mean, in many ways, DMC 1, if you ever get a chance to go through that whole game, Zach, it very much feels like when this used to be Resident Evil 4, when it was going to be this the Resident Evil series going on a totally new action-focused direction because DMC1 has a castle that you explore that has puzzles you have to solve in it, and it ends with you escaping the castle before it explodes. It. You guys totally wrecked my shop, and I haven't even named it yet. You're gonna pay for that. Yeah, I do want to play DMC1 at some point. DMC2? Uh... Eh. I, I know it's super ridiculously easy, and I could probably get through it very quickly, but I've heard things about that game, and I don't think I want to touch it. <laughs> yeah, I've beaten only Dante's campaign, and uh, not the other character that you play on the second disc. And yeah, the game's reputation is there for a reason. The game's a joke. You can beat anything w without needing to try. You can kill any enemy in the game by just holding down the shoot button. It's pathetic. It's just shocking how ba how just bad that game is. And it still has the fancy cutscenes, but it just goes in a weird direction where Dante isn't even really Dante anymore. He doesn't act like the, char the, the carefree character from the first game. He's... He now has a weird Two-Face gimmick where he likes flipping a coin to determine what he's going to do. Like, he's not even the same character, it's just bizarre. So, Brian, when you played DMC 3, you stuck with Trickster style, right? Primarily, yes. I mean, in general, I kind of stuck with beginner methods and looking up FAQs to try to figure out good ways of getting through the boss fights. Though, when I did fight the final boss against Virgil... Wasn't it a case where you had to use a specific um, style to beat him? I forget how that worked. I don't remember that. Okay, because I... Because on that fight, I used the... It was either the boots or the gauntlets. And I beat him that way. It's been ages, though, so I'm probably misremembering what some of the different weapons even were. I remember the ones I used the most. Mainly the Cerberus Ice Nunchucks. And... Oh, yes, of course. Oh, man, it's been a while. I actually don't remember them as much as I'd like. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to me that the only version of the game where you can actually switch between styles on the fly is on the Switch. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to switch styles, but I stick with Swordmaster because I like the extra combo potential. Oh, these enemies are annoying. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. I was like, where's the item? Yeah, it's gonna lower my rank. I'd like to not die. Yep. <laughs> oh. I feel like many times when people use a phrase derogatory to say, or when they use the the phrase derogatory of, this looks like a PS2 game when they're referring to a modern game or the bad special effects in a modern movie, I feel like either those people don't remember that era very well or didn't actually have a PS2 and live through that era. <laughs> because when you look at games like DMC3, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2... Uh, well, Resident Evil 4, which was a GameCube game originally, but the fact that they even got it running on the PS2. There's some fantastic looking PlayStation 2 games. Oh, it's Silent Hill 3, absolutely. No, yeah, I remember when there was a time where I was like, oh man, how can graphics get better than this? And then the PS3 released, so then I went, how can graphics get better than this? And then PS4 released, and I was like, eh, they look a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's how everybody felt about the jump to the PlayStation 4 era. Like, it was a little too soon. And then 5 came out, and it was like, well, this also feels a little too soon. At this point, it's less about graphical fidelity as much as just, like, you know, how well the game runs. Or what it can yeah. do with the technology. Let's see, come on, let me show it. There we go. I don't know how often I'm going to be able to actually get it to work, but this game does have a mechanic I really like called Enemy Step. Let's see. Come on. Let me land on you. Come on, please. There we go. I sort of did it there. Nice. Yeah. So in terms of your favorite character action games, where would you say this ranks? Is this your favorite? No, I'd say there's a few that I would put above this one. Oh my god. Uh, I would put God Hand and even Hi-Fi Rush above this. Game C3 did not like hearing that. No, shut up! <laughs> Easy mode is now selectable. If I restart the mission, can I get the vital star? <laughs> Probably. I would hope so anyway. I didn't think I was going to get stuck this early. God damn it. This is how it always happens. Yeah, it does. Oh yeah, Devil May Cry is one of those games where the combos are about pausing before hitting the button again, right? Yeah. I never can adapt to that kind of combo system. Oh, uh... You're gonna have to for Hi-Fi Rush. Oh, well, I mean, when I was playing that at the beginning of the... When I beat the first boss and all that, I could adapt to Hi-Fi Rush, but that's because that whole game's entire gimmick is music and a beat that is constantly being projected for you. That's another reason I bought the PS5 version, is that it has full um, controller support uh, for the PS5 DualSense, so you'll actually always feel the beat in the controller. Oh, I didn't think about that, but that's pretty cool. And it has a bunch of adaptive trigger stuff in it, too. They put a lot of effort into the PS5 version. Like every version. And now they're dead. They released their last update, and now they're gone.
sick. Now this bitch is gonna come in and try to knock you down. I don't even think I took any damage. No, you didn't. That was a perfect attempt. And you kept up, you got everything up to SS at one point. In terms of your ranking. Oh. Oh, man. I keep thinking after that clash I can hit the button. Oh. I hit the button. I keep thinking I can hit a button to clash again, but you can't. You have to just roll out of the way. I might as well show off the most important feature. Okay. Yeah, I just need to play more patiently. But you think wouldn't be the case in a game that's all about ranking up combos and just beating the hell out of enemies. Yeah, my brain got stuck on must I must make the number go up. <laughs> must must get triple S, but no. I it just you just got to live. Definitely not a world I'd actually want to live in, but Especially in DMC5, you definitely see a lot of people that are just living in this world. Yeah, if I remember correctly, so many people in DMC5 just die. <laughs> Where does the time go? So the story behind DMC3, isn't it something like the creator of 2 felt bad for how badly it came out, so he wanted one more shot and made 3, and... Oh hey, I recognize that thing. Fuck that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yes. the Leviathan. Oh my god. I hate that level. It was something like that. I know that 2 just had like a crazy bad um, development behind the scenes stuff involving I mean that's why the environments are so huge and open and the game does not like the gameplay does not actually match the need for that at all um, I imagine it was very very different before they ended up having to just to put it together and make it what it was which yeah then they came back with three and they obviously made many people still consider the best game in the series I come well. Doesn't it excite you? The Tim and the Gru has revived. The Great One, who once ruled this earth as the medium between the human world and the demon world. Isn't it a magnificent view? The greatest minds of their time, those who revered evil, constructed this glorious edifice. Now, after two millenniums of confinement, it can at last fulfill the purpose for which it was intended. That's none of my concern. Did he have it? Of course. I will say normally with my action games, I normally get annoyed with lots of cutscenes. Especially if an action game has action in the cutscene, I get annoyed. Usually because I'm like, hey, that's what I want to be able to do in this game. But for DMC3, it doesn't bother me because you can do a lot of crazy things in this game. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't even get the sh okay. I think if you have Trickster, there's a moment in the cutscene where Dante's fighting in a shop with the pizza. There's a moment where he skateboards on one of the Reaper things. I think you can do that if you have Trickster. I think Trickster lets him do that. Yeah, I think if you knock one down and dash into it, I've been able to do it before. Yeah, I think Trickster lets you do environmental things. Like there's there's some poles that Dante can spin on. I found it. Oh, Lady's a cool character. I really like Lady. She definitely gets some of the cooler uh, action choreography in the game, in my opinion. Particularly in the cut cutscene that's coming up pretty soon, actually, if we even get there. I believe there's a way to level up styles so you can get new moves for something like Swordmaster, but I forget how to do it. It might just be the more you use the style, the more it levels up. Oh, I don't even remember these enemies at all. Dante just never gets a break, does he? He just finished off the last battle and he walks two steps forward and now there's four more of these guys. But he's just having a good day. Well, you know what they say, devils never cry. Right, yeah. Angels don't laugh, cats don't dance, you know. Oh, yeah. All dogs go to heaven. Yes. Oof. Sweeping you from the side. Oh my gosh, they keep going off camera. I mean, that's kind of the thing that, that annoyed me when I was playing this game, is that I just felt like the enemies were constantly out of my line of sight, and then they would just cheap shot me. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some levels in the late game that enemies will do that a ton. Not to say that they didn't do that in one, but I definitely remember that happening to me less often. Oh, wait, can I wall jump or is that in Trick Master only? Oh no, I can wall jump. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh. I was getting annoyed because I kept hitting circle. Because <laughs> circle is circle is what I said to do this. The game kept uh, thinking I was trying to look at the thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I need to equip it, which I can't yet. I don't... Actually, I should... Oh, I was hitting the wrong button. These environments are great, too. Really taking advantage of the game now being fully 3D. Which 2 was as well, but this much more takes advantage of the detail of the space. Not just a bunch of boring, way open, super wide highways. DMC 1 was still in... I mean, it had some... It was kind of a mix, because I remember that game having some pre-rendered environments, and then some 3D environments. It was like a decent mix. Five came out, and then there hasn't really been any other signs of DMC, right? Like, I know that they're making a Netflix uh, show based off of the franchise, but in terms of another game, and this, after the success of Five, I would have figured they would have been starting to work on Six, but nope.
Have you seen the DMC anime from like the early 2000s? I saw two episodes, but I didn't really like it that much, to be honest. That's what I hear. It's a shame, too, because I think the concept of DMC could lend itself to some cool... I mean, not, maybe not just action, but lore-wise, there's, you know, these whole demons and gods and angels and all this stuff. You could do make an interesting show out of that, and many anime have. But what they would do with a new show, I'm not really sure. Whether they would just adapt all this and reinterpret it. I mean, if it's from the same production team that made Castlevania, that sounds like what they would probably do. They would just try to readapt Devil May Cry, but do a little bit more with adding lore to the story and characters. Oh yeah, I would love if the Castlevania people did Devil May Cry. I'm still far too focused on trying to be fancy, and it's getting me hit a lot. Not much in terms of health. Uh, if there's one thing you should be doing in the Devil May Cry games, it's looking for secrets, which I'm usually... I'm very terrible at finding secrets in games. Like, I feel like I can get in here, but I don't know how. Oh. It really was just that simple. <laughs> it just wants the sword. Uh, if I could just get to 10,000. Please. 10,000. I want stuff. Well, I'll take the green orb, but... <laughs> So th does this one is okay? Yeah, it wants a certain rank before it explodes, or maybe not. Maybe it just needed a certain amount of damage. I I think you're right. I think it is probably getting to a certain rank. That's what makes the most sense to me. Come on, ten thousand. You got that blue orb right there. Do you need it? Yeah, if I collect four of these, it extends my health. Cool. Okay. Yeah, my memories of DMC3 are very vague, but I mostly remember pain. But I do remember the fun credit sequence where you're alongside Lady, just like chopping up enemies while the credits roll. That was something I heard about the special edition of 4 is that they added more playable characters like Lady and some of the... And the, I think they even added... What was her name from DMC1? Trish, I think? <gasps> yes. Yeah, Trish. I think they also, yeah, they added Trish into as a playable character in 4, which sounds nice. I'd be curious to see how that lady plays. Uh, Brian, I'll let you decide. Stinger level 2 or drive? I should probably just get Stinger level 2, huh? Probably just upgrade Stinger while you can, Zach. Yeah. It's the best, one of the best moves in the game. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Yeah, right. Yeah, already here. We're here we go. <laughs> Good luck. Pray for me, Brandon. <laughs> I already have to edit once. Let's not edit twice. I know. Well, for me, this boss was what I got stuck on first for hours when I first played this game. I remember during the boss rush, I got stuck on the dancer for, uh, like, the... Uh, what's the best way to describe her? Some kind of... She's the one that gives you the guitar weapon. I got stuck on her for a super long time, and I don't know why. I got stuck on her longer than I got stuck on Virgil. 
Oh, the ogre that gives you the twin swords is also pretty difficult. Give me what I want. Fetch me the nunchucks. I love the nunchucks. I'm trying to remember what else I used. Nunchucks. I tried to use a guitar, but I just couldn't use it properly. It's amazing what adding lyrics to a backing track in any fight will add to just how it pumps energy into you during a, a fight in any game. I mean, I think that's what elevated the Psychopath fights so much in Dead Rising is just those kick-ass, like, metal tracks on every single one of these crazy bosses. May Cry 3, everybody. I I was fucking sure I was gonna have that. Ugh. You very nearly did. It was very close. Are you just gonna go in here without any stars? I can't. I already... Like, like I said, any stars you spend, uh, they stay gone. Even if you reset the chapter? If I reset the chapter, uh, they come back. But I have to reset the entire chapter. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure when I did this fight, I didn't have any stars. I just somehow just brute forced this damn boss. I was so frustrated on this fight. Hey, well now you're doing some more damage because you're team attacking his different weak points at once. Zack's desperation for not having any stars has upped his A game. But the question is, is it an S game? Or an SSS game? Nah, it's probably more like a A game. Come on. Man, the range of that's ridiculous. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it feels like a good strategy is to try to stay in the air with him so you can avoid those attacks from his paws, but at the same time, it's difficult because... You can't stay in the air super long unless you can keep that combo up. Damn it. Keep thinking I can get out of that in time, and I just can't. Yeah. 
I'm just gonna stay back this time. Yeah, just be careful of the timing when he shoots that ice breath on the floor. Three, four. There we are. Oh, jeez. Those damn paw swipes are so fast. Oh, there we go. Just lay it all <gasps> in. Lay it all in. There we go. Who knows? I'm a gamer. Myself. The sad thing is, I think the game's still gonna lower my rank for even using items in the previous fight, maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. This is the special edition. It's the it's the easier version. <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, we should probably end it here, but I want to show off the nunchucks first. I love the nunchucks. Well, you're gonna be cutting a, a lot out anyway because of the different level attempts. We're looking at 50 minutes right now, Zach. Yeah, I saw her earlier. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the cutscene that I was talking about earlier with Lady. <laughs> Are you going to the party? What's the hurry? Didn't you get an invitation? <laughs> yes, yeah, I love this stuff. It's it's just it's perfect. It's so well choreographed and just ridiculous in all the best ways. There's a there's an overall joyfulness to the design and the feel of DMC3. Yeah, DMC3 just wants you to have a good time. Well, once you can master its controls and combos and stuff like that. Yes. Unfortunately, many of the bosses in this game did not give me a good time. Just don't let the combos control you like they control me. I just I got it. I got to get the S's, Brandon. I must get the triple S at least once. Which I think I can do now that I have two guns and two weapons. Being able to switch between the weapons mid-combo should... Hopefully, hopefully. Uh... Yep. You better count. It does count the items used in the first attempt, even though it doesn't give them back to me. Ugh. Yep. Don't use any items, Zach. But I didn't use any in the second attempt. Does that not count for something? No, it doesn't mean anything. Sorry, Zach. Even here back in 2005, before the term really became even a thing, they might as well have just given you a grade that says get good. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on get good. I hate that phrase with a burning passion. Yes, it's, it's, it's especially it's hated by those people that have to get good. No. <laughs> Which Zach, I am one of those. I just hate that phrase because oftentimes it's generally used to ignore someone's criticisms about a game. You know, maybe the game would be better if you were better. It's like, well, maybe the game should be better. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to say there is no responsibility to get better at a game. But there's times where it, you have to question, is this a valuable use of my time, or is this game just a little too much? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I want to get to, because some things are bullshit to people, and then... Different people have different preferences. What's bullshit to someone may be exciting and fun to someone else. 
You know, someone might go, oh, I don't like fighting games because I'm good at them. Someone would just respond, get good, and I'd be like, I mean, at the end of the day, people get good at games that they like, really. Right. If you like a game and you play it enough, you will eventually get good at it. And I had my moments, I mean, we've, we've talked about them in the past, but I'll just say that I had my moments with the Souls games where I, I think it was when I fought Margo at the beginning of Elden Ring, where I just kept beating my head against him until I f started figuring out his exact strategies, and when I had my good attempt, it was basically just like a, a perfect master run at that point, because I had just gotten so used to his moveset. And in that moment, I had a good time, because I feel like I'd really conquered something. But then when that game just goes, okay, so here's the next boss, and it's just like that where you're going to bash your head against it until you eventually figure out its moves, and it's just going to be that cycle for a hundred hours or however long Elden Ring is. I was just like, I, you know, I think I'm good. Yeah, not everyone wants to do that, and I think that is fine. Like, creatively. You look at that game, and you're like, oh, man, like, the creativity put into this world, just how much there is in terms of secrets and stuff to explore and just how beautiful everything is and I'm never going to see any of it because I'm not going to have the patience to deal with any of it whereas in a game like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom which are harder than the average Zelda game I still feel like I'm exploring the world enough without getting constantly destroyed that I want to see more of it yeah I'm, I'm someone that's put uh, so far 40 hours into Out and Ring, and I'd like to play more of it, but I just have to be, like, in the mood. Yes. But no, I, I do love Out and Ring, because for as much of the bullshit that there is in that game, there's so many fun things to mess with as well. There's a lot of fun weapons, a lot of fun skills. I'm not saying that Elden Ring doesn't have some amazing customization, whereas if one thing's not working, you you know, you can always experiment with a new way. Like, I, I'm not saying that the game's bad and it's just, you know, the game clearly has things in, in there to help people out. It's just, it wasn't enough for me to want to struggle through it for that. DMC 3 was enough where I was like, oh, I'm going to get a nice fancy cutscene and all I have to do is just... Bash my head against this next boss. But, you know, it's not as long as Elden Ring. This game is de decently lengthy for an action game. Oh my, why did I not just go through the door? Uh, I spent, like, 20 hours trying to get good at that game because people talked about it, how fun it was. And I just was, I was almost never having fun at any point. Oh, I know what your game you're talking about. Yeah. At some point, I just went, I discovered what I would have had to do to get good at that game, and I just went, you know what, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to play this game, and I don't like how I have to get good at it. I'm just going to go back to playing Guilty Gear Strive. <laughs> and Street Fighter VI. And Guilty Gear Plus R. Which, Guilty Gear Plus R has its own kind of bullshit, but it's bullshit I'm willing to tolerate. I guess I should specify the game I was talking about, because it's easier. Uh, it's fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. That's not what I was thinking of. <laughs> oh, what were you thinking of? Oh my god. I was thinking of something that may be even worse, which is your your hot take feelings on uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Oh, that had nothing to do about me getting good. I just don't think that game's great. Now, Revengeance is a pretty easy game. Well, not super easy, but I was able to play through most of it really comfortably. And you'd say that was a bad, that was a thing against its favor? You would have wanted it to be a little more challenging? Eh, not really. I thought the challenge was perfect, to be honest. It's just more, I didn't really like the action controls. I didn't like that there wasn't really any dodging, it's a lot of parrying, and being able to parry in the game is cool, and it does feel satisfying when you're fighting a boss and you parry a lot of their stuff. But 
But uh, I did I didn't like fighting a lot of the enemies. Uh, the boss fights are really good though. I will say that at, at least. Well, ex except the final boss. I hate the final boss. I hate fighting Armstrong. I hated farming, fighting Armstrong because I was terrible at doing the uh, sword chopping QTEs in that game. I hated Armstrong because he had this move where he could heal and I had no idea how to stop it. Oh, well that too, yes. But Zach, the meme song, that makes it good. I mean, the music in that game is also very good. And he says make America great again at one point. There are very good qualities to Rising Revengeance. It's not a bad game. It's just... it's not. I would not put it in some of my favorite character action games. Along with, uh, <laughs> along with Bayonetta. Oh no! Sorry, we had to bring it up eventually. I don't, I don't, I didn't like Bayonetta very much. But Zach, it's the new, it was the newest game from Hideki Kamiya, the guy that directed this game. I tried a couple levels of Bayonetta, and I couldn't really get into it either. And it was a similar problem to DMC4, where the the difficulty of everything, and, th and then I was like, well, okay, but I'll get rewarded by fun cutscenes. And then I watched the cutscenes in Bayonetta, and I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> At, like, any time in this game. Like, DMC's ridiculous, but you get what's happening. You get, okay, these are the bad guys, this is the story. They're trying to stop these characters. Oh, who's this character? Who's this lady? What's she up to? We have, and you're just following this path. But then when I'm trying to watch the story in Bayonetta, it's so... It's always just a bunch of stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be actually engaging with. But that's me. I'm caring more about the story than the point of that game, which is the combo-based gameplay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Bayonetta plays terribly as an action game or anything. I just like that game's pretty difficult, and so was this one, obviously. But I don't know Bayonetta. I just could not get used to for whatever reason. Oh, and I hated the quick time events in Bayonetta. Despise them. They. It really puts the quick in quick time event, if I remember correctly. Oh no. But yeah, I just. I just didn't like trying to perform combos in that game as much as I do in DMC3. I mean, in terms of character action games I love, I mean, the ones that are actually coming to mind off the top of my head are pretty, pretty basic ones that everybody's probably going to say. Like, obviously, I really like the action in Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, I really like God of War 3. If we're gonna talk about like just crazy action games, like I I know, and it's it's just the most base answer because it's God of War, but three, the scope of the bosses in that game is like everything I could have possibly wanted out of a character action game. The opening fight where you're on the back of Gaia fighting, uh, f fighting uh, the the giant Leviathan horse crab water thing and the camera's just zoomed out and Kratos is just like this small tiny insect or the later kind of almost QTE based fight against Kronos where you're ripping off his fingernails and stuff it's so grody but it's it's the the, the presentation is just so incredible like I love every inch in that game and I'm speaking to that as someone who another hot take I'm not that big a fan of uh, God of War 1 or 2 I like them from a presentation level, but I find them mostly just annoying and frustrating as games, while 3 was like the perfect balance for me. I'm actually going to agree with you on God of War 1. I haven't actually played much of 2. Uh, I did a weird thing where I played through 3 first. Oh, interesting. And then after I enjoyed 3 so much, the person that let me borrow 3 let me borrow his HD collection. So I played through 1. I didn't like one that much. Oh, especially, especially the, uh, oh, what is it? The tower in Kronos or something? Oh, I ne I nearly fell asleep. Everything's so <laughs> brown and gray, and it lasts for way too long. And there's this one maze moment that I couldn't finish. Okay. For, like, I don't know if the game glitched or if I just couldn't figure out what to do. 
but I got so mad. I got so mad at this maze that I was like, let me see if I could glitch through the wall. So I started jumping and doing these swing, this one swinging attack near a wall over the door that I'm supposed to go through to get out of the maze. And the hilarious thing is it actually did work. I did eventually glitch through the wall and continue. <laughs> Wait, which 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 God of War was this? Was this just the first one or one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I know exactly the puzzle you're thinking of. Is that is that the one where you have to kick that box and there's all those spikes in the floor? No, it's. I don't remember there being a box. Okay, that's okay. Then you must have been not as far as I was in one. But yeah, in one there's a pretty notorious puzzle where there's a bunch of spikes on the floor with a time limit that's very specific where you have to kick this box at exactly the right time and get it up against this pillars that you can jump on top of and if you don't the spikes come out and kill you and i know so many people that didn't actually do that part legitimately they just um you know just tried to find a way to glitch up onto the pillar and just skip the section and most people did that instead um i think I don't even remember what I did. I think maybe I did it legitimately, but it's been so long. I've also I've beaten every God of War game. I've also beaten the PSP games, um, uh, Chains of Olympus and Ghosts of Sparta, and both of those games. I actually like both of those games better than I do the PlayStation Two games. No, I, I've beaten God of War one. Oh man, so you did like the whole walking over the the underworld, walking across the tiny pillars. With this shredding spikes crap. Oh, God. The first God of War is brutal. Come on, please. Oh, I'm going to try one more time at that. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> I think you should try 2 someday. I, 2 is a better game than the first one pretty easily. Um, but it definitely does have its own frustrations. Hey, Zach, do you remember the QTE fight against Krauser in Resident Evil 4. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember that. The entire final boss of God of War 2 is just one long QTE. And it's even longer than Krauser's fight, and if you die, it sets you back the whole way to the beginning. Uh-oh. Chamber of Sins. And I have also played the reboot of God of War, the 2018 one. And I have not gotten around to Ragnarok yet, but I really like God of War 2018 a lot. It's a really good story. Really well written. Great world. And I really like the way they changed up the action. They made it almost more kind of like a action RPG sort of thing. I just don't like putting that game in the same rankings as the original trilogy of God of War games and the PSP games because they do feel like very different things. But I do look forward to the Devil May Cry reboot where it's an over-the-shoulder third-person story-based game where Dante has ha, has a son that isn't Nero that he's trying to train how to be uh, the big de demon killer. But he's dealing with the fact that uh, he doesn't want to be a demon killer and he wants his kid to have a better life. <laughs> Oh, is this what I think it is? It sure is. What? It's this early? Yes, it's this early, Zach. I hate this damn thing. Alright, so welcome to another... Uh, well, I guess we never reached a two-hour video in Keeping BZ, but uh, here we go. Oh my gosh, yeah, we have been playing for a while, haven't we? Well, I don't know why I'm saying we, it's me. I did not think this thing was this early on in the game. Yeah, this thing always takes me forever because of how it moves. Man, I wish I had double trigger. 
ow, ow, ow. And see, that's another thing that kind of threw me off of 3 when I first played it, is that the Devil Trigger, it does enhance your attacks and everything, but the Devil Trigger in DMC 1, you turn it on, it auto-heals you, you get super cool abilities, it just, it's basically just like, yeah, like your, your super heat mode that makes the, that does make the game easier, like, all the frustrations, any frustrations I had with DMC1 were, were kind of blown away by just how fun the Devil Trigger is to use. And they kind of nerf it a bit in 3, which made me kind of sad. But to be fair, 3 is, a, is trying to be a much more challenging game, so... Welcome to the gun show. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about Ebony and Ivory. I guess you could say we're really keeping busy now. Yeah. Okay, you're down past half. You're almost there. Okay, so there is, it, it, there's a possibility that you'd be able to still stay on when he starts flipping. Because you would just need to find a, a safe place to land and then get back on. I wonder if I can actually wall jump off of him when he does that flip and then get back on. Yeah. You're kind of jumping blind there because the camera doesn't really give you a good view of where to land on him. Yep. Goodbye. Look on the bright side, I won't need the star. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're doing pretty good on health. Ah. Man, this does not give you a good idea of where you need to land. Come on, singer. Save me. Oh, thank God. I thought we were going to have to do one more rotation. Yeah, I know. Uh, so one more mission, right? <laughs> no, I'm... Uh... Oh, God. Once we get to the next save point, we're moving on. We're moving on? No, we're stopping! Oh, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> it's said to be powered by time. This is where the clown shows up, right? It should be. <laughs> yep, there he is. Devil boy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Better listen to what others say, lad. This tower here is very sturdy. You see? I love this character. He's a lot of fun. We'll do no good. The English voice acting in general in this game is pretty much perfect. Or I'll pierce that big nose. That could be a problem. Just hear me out. You've got nothing to lose, right? My name is Jester, and I know a thing or two about this place. That it's legally distinct from Joker. Yeah. This entire sector. Yeah, the one of the main villains in Klonoa is called Joker, like J-O-K-A. You know what that 
but in cer but in uh, different uh, translations, it is just Joker. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually a case where the animations were motion captured, which, I mean, a lot of times that can look awkward in some games, but here they bounced it really well and it doesn't feel off with, like, the facial animations. Bingo! That is what the something is! Remember that, kid? Write it down on your hand if you don't trust your head. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the pack he's going. That 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 a that. Thanks. So all of that bullshit just to tell him that there was a button next to the door that opens the door. <laughs> he's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, eh, there's that. I didn't use any items. I'm a good boy. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, we'll end it there because, boy, this part is going to be long. But there's going to be a fair bit to snip out. No, oh, yeah, true. But if you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> and we'll try to keep it shorter. I, I know it's my playthroughs that keep doing this, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> But all it said, this is... Yeah, we both highly recommend Devil May Cry 3. I don't think I'll ever play this game again, but for what it is, it has such great personality, incredible graphics and animation, pumping soundtrack that just adds to everything. Like, it is one of the classic action games. It's just... You know, like the camera's probably the only thing that hasn't aged super well. Camera and lock-on, I would say. But other than that, yeah, this game still plays smooth as butter. I Again, I do think there have been some character action games that are better. Like, the recent example, Hi-Fi Rush. Oh, Hi-Fi Rush is so good. Brandon, play Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, I need to finish it. But for now, we shall call it a night. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. Yes, whatever that shall be. Probably Sonic. <laughs>